Uh, last December, we anticipated improvements in the state's economy and budget picture. Since then, uh, little has really changed, and the state is continuing to go on a holding pattern uh, around some of those previous estimates. Today's forecast really does little to change this. Some small revenue increases, some small spending decreases add about a 1% improvement to our forecast. That anticipated $323 million balance does not stick around long. It immediately is, goes to replenish the state's budget reserve and then start to pay, repay some of the school shifts uh, for our K-12 education institutions. As you see here, you'll see the forecast changes uh, that we show in this forecast. About $93 million change in our revenues, about $230 million changes in our spending. Revenue picture, as you've been looking at the monthly collections, has been tracking pretty much along expected lines. GDP numbers have also uh, been pretty much what we've expected. Correspondingly, you see very little change in the revenue side of the picture. On the spending, uh, much of this change is in the health and human services area. The question obviously is what about Minnesota? How are we doing compared to the national numbers? And the answer is we're doing a little better than the U.S. statistics. Our unemployment rate, 5.7 percent in December versus the December U.S. rate of 8.5 percent is 2.8 percentage points different, 2.8 percentage points lower. And historically, we've been somewhere around 1.4 percentage points on average lower. So this is a noticeable difference in our unemployment rate. The unemployment rate is falling faster. There's a section in the, in the handout that we gave you that describes some of the improvements that we've seen in the unemployment rate. Uh, we, wages are uh, growing a little faster uh, in the forecast. And in general, uh, we're we expect the Minnesota economy to do just a little bit better than the U.S. average. This is great news. This is great news for Minnesota. And to my way of thinking, and I su suggest or for the uh, thinking of most of Minnesota, it's a reaffirmation of the Republican plan is working. Uh, we worked very, very hard during the course of last session to set us on this course. Uh, the course has been established. The plan is working. It's reflected in these numbers here, and we're excited, we're proud, we're happy. Uh, things are moving in the right direction for Minnesota, and as you think about where we were in terms of a $6.2 billion deficit, a $5 billion deficit, and now looking at a literally uh, added up about $1.2 billion surplus, that's very, very positive, and that's something I think we can all be excited about. Uh, this is good news not only to the taxpayers of the state, it's also good news to the business owners in the state that they can now feel comfortable that our state plan is not only budget is balanced for this biennium, but we will start on the next biennium. We've made good progress on that. Uh, but as we said before, we're not going to stop until it is not only budget neutral, but even producing a surplus in the out biennium's. This budget forecast is the third consecutive improvement in our state's budget forecast, totaling over $2 billion in improved budget expectations over those three reports. It's further proof that Minnesota's economic recovery is underway, slowly but surely, and that it is reasonably expected to continue for the rest of this biennium. So I will hold myself and I will hold the legislature to the principle that any additional spending in this session or any uh, additional tax reduction in this session has to be fully offset in this biennium and in the next biennium because uh, the forecast also shows that the expected deficit uh, leading into the next biennium is already $1.1 billion. And I will just point out once again that if my tax bill had been passed by the legislature raising taxes on the wealthiest 2% of Minnesotans, we'd have a larger surplus shown for this biennium and there would be no projected deficit for the next biennium. Republicans have essentially, with the budget that they passed and the shutdown last July, guaranteed uh, that we're going to be facing exactly the same choices next year uh, that we faced this budget, uh, this, this biennium. Uh, with that deficit, we'll have to decide whether we do the same things the Republicans chose to do, uh, which is borrow from our kids, raise property taxes all across the state and protect special interests, or uh, whether we choose differently and pass a budget that would actually truly solve 
uh, our deficit problems and strengthen middle class families instead of continuing to nickel and dime them. Small amount of revenue, uh, but the bigger story, I think, is as it relates to pay, starting to pay back schools. And I guess maybe once you become a grandparent, you become more concerned about schools. And I think about it more than I ever have in my life. But I think what we all need to remember and be cautious about is even after this $300 million is paid back to schools, we still owe our K-12 system, because of the Republican budget last year, $2.4 billion. I mean, the next $2.4 billion of new revenue that comes in, in law, is committed to schools. So before uh, people in the business community get too excited about, oh gosh, there's some money to bring down our property taxes, they just need to remember we owe our schools still an additional $2.4 billion.